blue-white control on Sparta side versus Obzon from Jadeen. And you know, we keep seeing these matchups where Jadeen's playing against other fair decks, and she's always ahead. I think she just knows these matchups really well. On yeah. paper, I'm just thinking, give me this cryptic <laughs> command I deck. know. <laughs> and Jadeen is just beating them all up. Right, and this is one. This one especially, you see, like two Sphinx's Revelations, four Cryptics, some Elspeth Sun's Champ, and you're thinking, man, I don't want to play Obzon against this. Yeah, bunch of Supreme Verdicts, just clean answers, and Path Exile for Tarmogoyf. And right now, Michael Sparks on a lot of lands. He's taking two damage to turn off Lingering Souls. Jadine is stuck on three with a full grip of cards. She'll go for Tireless Tracker, and does she have a land to follow it up? Yes, and it's Marsh Flats. Yikes. Huge. Yeah, that is really good. Michael going to crack fetch here now. He could always swing his revelation or something like that on end step. Goes down to 12, getting a basic. If he's getting a basic, I think he's planning to spend his mana. One would assume. Yeah, swings his revelation for three. He'll go up to 15. Yeah, he really wants to find a supreme verdict to get that tracker off the table, clean up these spirits. And while he's tapped down, Jadine's going to go ahead and crack that fetch land to get another clue. Good play there by Jadine. Wouldn't expect anything less. Four mana. There's a Supreme Verdict you wanted, and it delivers. Board is clear. Seventh land here from Sparts. Jadine's going to crack one of the clues. Looking for something somewhat specific. She draws Verdant Catacombs. That one's probably not the something specific she was looking for. Yeah, well, land five's not terrible in her deck as long as she has creature lands in play. But right now, it doesn't appear that she does. Right. And the Marsh Flat's not one either. If she still had the Tireless Tracker, that would have been a pretty good yeah, draw. Yeah, that would be pretty good. Just play the land and pass. One of the cards in her hand is an Abrupt Decay. That one's not doing anything for a minute. Covers things like Search for Escanta, which is one mm -hmm. of the better tools for the blue-white control deck in the matchup. Unfortunately, you don't really get to play cards that answer that and Celestial Colonnade. You know what? I am sad about something you said yesterday. And I know looking at these Sphinx's Revelations in Michael's deck, he said that this is probably might be the last modern tournament where we see Sphinx's Revelation. I'm pretty jazzed about that. I, I love that don't card. I like that card in modern. So I'm not saying it's good, but I love casting it. Sure. And you're right. I think when we get Jason the Mind Sculptor, I'm not sure we're going to see any more Sphinx's Revelations get cast. I'd you be just pretty surprised if people were still clinging to that one. If you want to draw cards, there's this great way to do it. Yeah. It's Jace. <laughs> Liliana of the Veil, first an inclusion of Kozak. Janine attempt tried to clear the way, but it was deprived. And Liliana's going to work. She's going to plus it. Michael discards a s island. Janine yeah. discards a forest. Yeah, despite that rev for three, that deprive was the only piece of counter magic, apparently. But Detention Sphere will clean up the Liliana. Well, given the Detention Spear, it's possible that Michael is hiding another piece of counter magic in hand. You well, just have a clean answer to Liliana. Yeah, it is, but Janine's got Abrupt Decay. That's not going to be countered. Hit Detention Sphere, get that Liliana back, plus it again. Land's gone, hit the graveyard for both players, and Janine's last card is Grim Flare, empty-handed now. I think Michael on one card, drawing up to two. Yeah, well, he, remember, he has two Sphinx's Revelations in his deck, so another one would certainly work here. Yeah, the card I'd rather draw that he only also plays two copies of is Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, how about this, though? Celestial Colonnade will take care of Liliana. That's not a bad exchange. Gotta figure the Grim Flayer is a 4-4 here. It'd be surprising if there was no Delirium. We saw Planeswalker, Instant, and Land all hitting the Band of Creature as well, uh, so that, that'll do it. And a Sorcery. Yeah. So those five types <laughs> probably that has Delirium. Sh that, that seems like enough. <laughs> Hopefully the top card of the deck is good before she sets up from there. And not going to get a hit. Here's Blessed Alliance taking care of Grim Flare. But the top card was good for JD, and it's Lingering Souls. She will cast and flash it back, get four 1-1s, one and will pass back to Michael. He can just leave Colonnade up as a blocker, which works here. Yeah, that uh, stems the bleeding quite a lot. Yeah, not quite enough damage output. Michael at 15. You can jam with the souls. One gets blocked. That's only three, and it's one less every turn. That's just not really enough. Having four spirits stops you from getting hit by Colonnade. Yeah, now he's going to attack with Colonnade. I think Jadeen will accept those terms. Yeah, with her on 17 and Michael on 15, she kind of likes just cracking back. Yeah. She's winning that race, assuming nothing changes. 
There was a second colonnade played for Sparts. If he gets to a point where he can activate both, that changes things some. Liliana, the last hope for Jadine. She will minus two, put two into the graveyard, but she has a choice of creatures. We see Grim Flare. Wait, is that it? Tireless Tracker. It's an interesting choice. With no lands in hand, the tracker is a less immediate value, but if she starts drawing lands, it gives her redraws kind of guaranteed, which is really nice. Yeah, she's going to go for that anyway, and actually only swings two spirit tokens. Looks like she actually wants to defend the Liliana. Yeah, that makes sense. The Liliana is good for a lot of value, and if there's some kind of sweeper here, that's the one thing she has going on. Activate Colonnade for Sparts. He's still attacking here as he goes at Liliana. A Spear Token jumps in the way. Yeah, he really wants to clean up that uh, Liliana. Gideon of the Trials. He'll plus on, on Tireless Tracker and play the last card in his hand. It's a land. With no creature lands, that means Jadeen can't crack in for lethal at the Gideon. Yeah. So now Jadeen has no bad draws, though, because Tireless Tracker has survived. Right. There's, there's some bad strings still, but uh, every, everything is at least worth something. Yeah, I guess Inquisition of Kozilek is dead. <laughs> right. Swings two spirits, J the Gideon down to two. Jadine draws Tarmogoyf. Yeah, just hoping to fade a supreme verdict here. Then she's in a pretty yeah. good spot because the Gideon can't bubble both the Tarmogoyf and the tracker. Yeah, Gideon should be taken down in a second here. And this is one of those spots where you like Jeskai a fair amount better than blue-white control. Being able to go upstairs at yeah. the Liliana yeah. with Electrolyze, Lightning Bolt, it's a lot better. Also, Electrolyze, just, it's Lingering Souls, is a really nice tool to have available. I do like that blue-white plays three Supreme Verdicts. Those are good. Those are good in this matchup, but there's a lot of cards that don't play as well. You know, just two Snapcasters. Love to have four. Mm -hmm. Gideon will plus on time. We're going to Gideon turns it around to acknowledge it's not doing damage. Now Mike let's decide if he wants to use that colonnade. Looks like he drew something that makes the decision difficult. Yeah. Just a land hill pass. He'll leave it back as as a blocker. Yeah, nine total. That's his tenth mana source. He's building up to be able to activate both colonnades. You kind of want to try to bluff something, but once Jadine's able to successfully attack, your bluffs kind of run out, so you can't really do too much in that regard. Yeah, now to get a double colonnade activation, you need 12 mana, so he's, he's two off. Minus two on the Liliana of the Last Hope. Jadine lets it go. The only creature in her graveyard actually is that Grim Flare. Yeah, without a land, the Tireless Tracker can't reasonably attack into a colonnade. She's going to swing the spirit tokens all at Gideon of the Trials. Now, Michael has the ability to activate Celestial Colonnade here and block one of them, and Jadine accepts. Gideon down to one. Yeah, she's able to more freely attack with the spirits now that the Liliana Ooh. was minus two. She doesn't need to do any blocking. Lingering Souls and Grim Flare was her cast. And her battlefield is just getting ever wider. Yeah. There is one more spirit token there. Yeah, it'll be trivial to take care of the Gideon from here. And you put a lot of pressure on Michael to solve this board. He's already gone through multiple cryptic commands. At least one Supreme Verdict, maybe multiple of those as well. And this is where, you know, I know I'm preaching to the choir here. I want more Snapcaster Mages. This is yes. the part of the game where, I mean, drawing one is just the best. It's your best draw all the time. Mm -hmm. And we talk about e even having all this mana. Yes, Sphinx's Revelation starts to get really good here. Problem is, Michael had to cast it earlier. You're just going to have to cast that card before you want to. So, many, so much of Modern is focused on proactive elements. And you just have to be committing game actions. You can't hang on to that card as, as much as you could in Standard, for example. So you just want Snapcaster Mage because you're going to have to cast it quickly, but you'll have access to whatever tool you want, and it's just more efficient. Three Spirit Tokens. Gideon's trying to knock that Gideon down. Counting, does he have the mana for two colonnades? I don't believe he does yet. Yeah, still one shy, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, well, he can use, he can activate one and then use the first one he activates to activate the second. <laughs> That's uh, reasonable in the face of removal spells, but. <laughs> yeah. He will trade one colonnade with Grim Flare, and Gideon gets hit down by the spirit tokens. We go back over to Michael. 
Gonna fan out those lands. Sinks his Revelation, maybe? If he draws his other Rev, we... do man, this is a game. Could be Snapcaster for Revelation. Sets that? two mana aside here. Yeah, Snap. But you might just have to Verdict. Oh, Search for Escanta is much worse than those cards. Yeah, well, he doesn't have much time either. Jadine is going to put him on a two. Where is it at one turn clock? Let's count it out. Go, go for the six, seven. Trackers, three. That's nine. Spirits, hey, that's 13. I think that Colonnade has to block. Yeah. Jadine drew Fatal Push or anything like that. Yeah, that would seal it. That would do it. 18 minutes remaining. These players are in game two. If Michael can get this one, it's going to be a fast game three. Mm. A full swing from Jadine. Activates Colonnade for Michael. You know, this tireless tracker, he is, he is the, not on the trail right now. He is looking for clues and just can't find anything. Not much of an investigator. Yeah. And he runs into a Colonnade while looking for clues and... Michael goes down to three. But if your tracker's not investigating, that means that you're drawing spells. And hey, that's yeah. not bad. Search for Escanta will transform into Escanta the Sunken Ruin. More importantly, he seems to have kept the card and is going to draw it. That's scary. Yeah. There's very few cards that are wanted right now. Supreme Verdict. That's one. Now, Jadine has flashed back that Souls again, so she doesn't have another threat immediately. We'll see if she can deal three more damage. Likely some more creatures hanging out, considering her attack was lethal previously, and she didn't have, say, Fatal yeah. Push for the Colonnade. But she could lose from here, because Michael has enough mana where he could cast the Supreme Verdict, and he'll get to use Azkanta on the end step. It's not very long before that Azkanta finds him the other Sphinx's Rev, and when he does, I, I don't know that Jadine can get three damage across. Dark Confidant and Tarmogoyf, yeah, and Souls, she's, she's committing. Yeah. It'll be more than three that she'll need if a Sphinx Revelation happens. Yeah, I think she knows that, so you see her just committing a huge board again. Michael doesn't seem thrilled about what he's found. I know that there is a Spreading Seas available in the four cards here. Yeah, if there were a Creature Land, he'd actually would be happy to draw that. Um, but right now, he needs a Supreme Verdict, a Snapcaster Mage, or a Revelation. I'm not sure anything else works. You can't grab Snapcaster Mage with Ascanta, so even right. if he found that. Non-creature, non-land card. We see Ascanta the Sunken Ruin here. He'll take it into the Trials. I suppose as one of Elspeth's Sons champion would be okay here as well. You'd much rather have that than Gideon of the Trials, I'll tell you that much. Gideon Jorah would even be preferred. Does he play one? No, I don't know if there's one in the list. I'm just saying oh, that yeah. this card is not good in this spot. It looks like the Planeswalkers are Elspeth, Sun's Champion, and Jace, Architect of Thought that are otherwise yeah. available. Main phase, he's going to activate Search again. Snapcaster, Serum Visions, Condemn, and a land. You know, and there's a lot of things. He could find a Cryptic Command, too. He plays four. I'm s With two Oscanta activations, if Michael dies on the next turn, it feels like he really hit the, l the bad end of variance. Well, he churned through a lot of that stuff in the early game. Okay, so it might just not be there. The story here, I think, is just how well JD navigated through those early turns. She made Michael burn through all those cards, and he can't find them because he already used them. Yeah, three cards now. He main phase activated Oscanta again. He's going to Path to Exile Away the Dark Confidant. Okay, that means he's not... If he's making a play like that, then he he's not dead. It suggests that he has the Tarmogoyf color covered and he's concerned about extra cards. Yeah, he maybe has a... You know, the, did he take the Condemn? It's like okay, he has command. Cryptic Command. Okay, so a tap draw. Yeah, just stopping the uh, extra card off the Dark Confidant can stop these creatures yep. from attacking for lethal next turn. Yeah, that makes sense. And tap draw, that buying of a turn is good because it also buys another Ascanta activation. So mm. it's like tap draw draw. Right. Inquisition. Well, you actually can't take Cryptic Command with that. So Michael might be okay. Mm -hmm. He's going to counter tap. So that suggests his other card is very much worth protecting. Right. I'm trying to think of cards that cost three or less that is... I, it's, so he's, he gave up a draw to protect the card in his hand. So this card in his hand has to cost three or less and be better than another random card in the deck. It sells that he has Condemn in his hand. Now, I don't know if that's a fact. I don't know if he actually has it. Yeah. But you it think, sells that kind of card. And you think Condemn is better than a random draw here? I think because he has Search for his Kanta, the random draw is maybe not the most impactful thing. It's also possible that he just has a very good card in his hand. Yeah. I might even protect, like, a Serum Visions there. All right, Path to Exile. So Michael actually, he's going to Pathway the Dark Confidant. He 
passed up, it looks like, uh, Cryptic Command. Gideon of the Trials is the last card. That makes sense that that was the card he was holding on to. Yeah, I got to look. Uh, yeah. Logic Knot and the holdings from there as well. Yeah. So it was one of those he was protecting, and those are both good. I don't know if I'd protect Logic Knot. I definitely would protect Gideon of the Trials. I'd protect Logic Knot. Really? You, there's, okay. There's, there's, you just have to not let Jadeen add anything to here. Any Planeswalker from here would be devastating. Yeah, well, well, he's at one, so after the hit from the two Lingering Souls, Top four, hey, Detention Sphere, that works, that works. Yeah, he can Sphere away the souls, Gideon it's the not, Tarmogoyf. It's not pretty, but he's he's alive, and he's got this counter spell, so he's going to Sphere away the... Oh, 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 oh. He Spheres away the Spirit Token, but Jadeen Fatal pushes her own creature. Oh, 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 oh. I love the play. Now, Michael actually still has an answer. We see Fulminator Mage from Jadeen. That, that's fine. I, oh, this might be wait, actually wait, wait. excellent, because I wait, think wait. that I saw a Settled Wreckage in Michael's hand. If JD oh, no. kills one of these oh, lands, no. the spirit will be lethal. Wow! That's Settled Wreckage! The Fulminator oh, Mage was goodness. the perfect out! Oh my goodness, it was Settled Wreckage. JD gets it. Two oh my!